Testing. Testing. All right. Welcome back to my minuscule little channel. And of course, this is dog meat, and I'm back here with another Warframe video. So, in this video, I just wanted to cover for uh, new players why it might be in your best interest to join a clan. As you can see, we're in my dojo here. And uh, when I mean mine, when me and my friends started this game, I had another friend who'd been playing for like a couple years offered uh, his warlord, th that's the, the head guy that of the clan, his warlord from his clan basically wanted to do an alliance with us and everything and uh, start a new clan and kind of fly under their banner a little bit and they would supply us with like supplies and resources and everything because when you do a clan or you start a clan it is very uh, pricey and requires a lot of materials. Well at the time I had a lot of friends that uh, um, we were playing together and stuff and this is a uh, prior to Destiny 2 coming out and everybody was all hyped and all this and you know I told them I said well you know I was talking with you know, our, our guy that we play with and um, he's saying that uh, he put me in touch with his warlord from his clan and they want to do an alliance what do you guys think? Well basically I got boated off the island so when, needless to say, when I started this game, I was doing a lot of research. I was looking at a lot of stuff. And uh, one of the things I was looking at on whether or not to join a clan. So, the rest of my friends, we all, you know, I, well, not me. I mean, personally, I thought the alliance thing would have been great. But I was pretty much outvoted on that. Everybody's like, well, we want our thing, our own dojo, and all this other stuff. And they, I guess they totally missed the point. Because when I talked to the guy, we would have our own dojo, but the thing is we'd be in alliance with their clan, uh, fly their banner and everything like that, and do missions and all this other stuff, and the, it, you know, a portion of what we do would go to them, and all this other stuff. But we would have our own dojo, we'd have our own things, they would supply us, and the guy was like very generous, very cool dude. Um, unfortunately, when I told him the decision that the rest of the guys made, the he uh I haven't been in contact with the guy since so I don't know if he's mad at me or not but as a new player why you should join a clan well for instance like this we had just had this plague star event right so uh, for anybody who watches this and understands like the uh, importance of the statue I know this is like the statue from the event and uh, me and my uh, minuscule little clan Busted our tails getting it together and everything like that. And we were told that there's supposed to be a blueprint once the event ends. A blueprint for like an event weapon and stuff like that. So in Warframe you'll have like a lot of these events and everything. And uh, sometimes they'll have some weapon blueprints that are specific to that. So if you guys know anything about that, please message me in the comments se section of uh, this video. And I'm going to try and post another video to another channel. And the guy's pretty dry but um he's got a pretty good video on how to start a clan how to start you know you, even new players can start their own clan they they can start what's called a ghost clan ghost clans usually consist of like uh members i think it's like members of 10 or less or something like that so anyways as you get more members and everything like that you uh rank up so as you can see we are a shadow clan i believe yes so we got a few uh new guys we got some guys that we played Destiny 1 with. And, uh, yeah, I've been enjoying playing Warframe. As you can see, I'm on the uh, sexy Mirage Prime, and she is very sexy. They did a very good job on this Warframe. I like everything from the armor pieces to the Sayadanas. Even the weapons that she came with was, like, really good. Um, they're really good status chance weapons and everything. So uh, the Kogakis are pretty much... Uh, you know the the shit. I like the the Kogakis. They're nice. Um, so as a new player, even if you're just by yourself and everything, I'll show you some of the perks that you get with uh, 
you know, having a clan. One, of course, is, um, well, not this one. You can contribute credits. This is your little vault area or your treasury and stuff like that. But if you're doing a clan and you're doing it by yourself, you really don't need that. But you would need one of these. And basically, this is your trading post. And uh, you can set like a clan tax and all that. So like, as you guys know, who may have been playing a while or have may not, you could go to Maru's Bazaar or any of the relays, or you could go to a trade chat over here and, you know, basically buy and sell. You run, let's say you run into somebody, you want to buy something, right? So, you run into somebody who's willing to sell something, well, you can have them come here to your clan, and you guys can make the exchange and all that. And as you know from Maru's Bazaar, the, uh, you know, to do any transaction in Warframe, like, the, there's some type of tax required and everything um, for trading. Well, you can get a portion of that, like, right here. As you can see, I could set my clan tax or whatever. But uh, I have a friend who consistently makes trades throughout the day. And he always brings them here, so, you know, I set it pretty low. We're not, I'm not really, I really don't care about it as far as, like, you know, it'd be nice to get, like, more credits and everything like that. But since he makes a significant amount of changes, we do just all right. So, um, with that being said, that's one of the benefits. So, even if it's just a clan just by yourself... Um, just understand that a lot of the resources and everything are, there's going to be a lot to build all of this, all of these things and stuff like that. So I had a lot of friends that were excited about it before, so we dumped a whole bunch of resources and everything in it. So for the newer players, which might attract you to, you know, well not, well more incentivize you to maybe get a clan or get in a clan or start a clan, you know, um, I'm going to show you like a few perks and all that. Um, a lot of your blueprints for some of your weapons are clan specific. I don't know if anybody's seen like some of the, uh, it's been a while since I've been in here, so you have to forgive me. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen like a lot of the, uh, weapons they have in the market, mainly the, uh, Arca, like Plasmor and the, some of the Arca weapons and all that. Well, yeah. There's a couple ways from what I understand that you are able to get those. You could either purchase them for the market or they should already be in your clan dojo. And basically what you do to level up here is you do a research. And as you can see, like I'll start a project right here. And as you can see, they require a lot of materials. And this is the same way with like building all the stuff inside your dojo, you know. The trading post, all the pretty decorations you guys saw in the in the main uh, hall. I know I didn't walk around that much, but my main focus here is just basically to show you the benefits. Because I'm pretty sure, like, if you're a solo player and you're kind of unsure, at least what you can do is you could start what's called a ghost clan and, you know, be able to have a dojo, build some things up, at least build, like, the rooms and the labs and as you progress through the game and get more resources and stuff like that then you can come in here and uh, do the research and stuff and as far as i know as you, the bigger your clan gets the more it unlocks like certain um you know perks like certain uh, blueprints and stuff so let me go ahead and contribute to this real quick these are new weapons that just came out and uh, um, I'll show you why. So I'm specifically here in the Tenno Lab just for the simple fact that um, I know one of the things that's kind of a pain in the butt in Warframe is you get this Excalibur or the Mag or the Volt and, you know, you're progressing through the game and you're like, yeah, this is cool, but, you know, I kind of like to try something else out. And you see all of these players with all these pretty cool Warframes and stuff like that, you know. And, uh... You think for yourself that, you know, you would like to get your hands on some of them. Well, some of them are actually clan specific. Like, uh, Naja right here is clan specific Warframe. He was like one of the only like prime war or non-prime, excuse me, non-prime Warframes that you could trade just because the only way to get them was through a clan. But I think they've changed that since then. 
So Najah's one of them, and I believe Wukong's the other one. And if you guys have heard from some of the people that have been around for a while, Wukong's supposed to be a uh, pretty powerful Warframe, a pretty easy user-friendly Warframe. I haven't leveled mine yet, so I couldn't tell you. Um, I, all I know is I do have the Zephyr, I have Wukong, and for those of you who are thinking about starting Warframe and you're trying to decide which uh, frame you want to choose, um, I would recommend going with the Excalibur just because the, you know those parts are a little more difficult to get. Mag, you could get further along the game, and as you can see, like right here, Volt, you could get in your clan dojo. And uh, let's see here, Banshee is another one that I believe that we have in here. Yes, and this is a great Warframe as well. Uh, I personally have a Banshee Prime. And I've been grinding the hell out of Syndicate mission, so I was able to put a Resonating Quick build on her. And it is very good for focus farming. So, as you can see, you do, like, your different um, weapons and everything and your blueprints. And what usually happens is you guys just saw me contribute to a uh, project where basically we're doing the research on it. So when you do the research on that, that's what's going to raise, like, your clan level right here. I don't know why the thing's not cooperating with me, but there you are. It'll raise your clan level and you'll go up in rank. And then as you go up in rank, you know, you have more incentives. So I will show you the ascension room because this is important. Okay, so one of my favorite places to farm like endo and everything like that is uh, I like doing IO. It does a couple things for me. Usually I take a low frame in there. And I'm able to level on the defense. And then, of course, from there, I'm able to uh, also get resources such as endo. Because they do, for some reason, like the Corpus missions do drop a lot of endo. Well, one of the things is, is um, you do the Iodin sculptures, right? You're looking at maybe about, depending on what type of sculpture you get, anywhere from like two to 3,000 endo a pop, right? So, um, it makes it a little difficult you know as you're upgrading to upgrade your mods and stuff like that so one of the things that uh, the benefits of being in a clan and having a dojo and everything is you have this area well it's not necessarily the area because this is basically an oracle room or whatever but i placed this thing that i'm standing on top of in there and basically this is going to be another thing that you're going to want to build and what this is, is this is an ascension console. So every your clan gets enough research done and is able to rank up, you will get a message will will basically say, you know, you are ready to ascend. And basically you come in here and it lasts for about, I believe, 72 hours, if I'm not mistaken. And you can ascend. And oh, it depends on the size of the clan. There may be a specific number that is required for you to fully ascend otherwise it will just stay up and it'll allow everybody you know who hasn't had a chance to do that to do that until the event closes and what that does for you is that will supply you with endo and usually like, the higher you get you get a stupid amount of endo like our last ascension i believe we got 9,000 endo and stuff like that so it's really in a new player's best interest to either find a clan which would be preferable or to start at least a ghost clan if you have some buddies that you know want to play and you guys want to start your own little clan and stuff like that then that's cool too and in fact you know it might be better and easier on you as far as like resource wise but um it's kind of a give or take uh let me kind of explain that okay so i have a buddy right now who's in a clan who has uh, and he has two accounts. He has an alternate account, which he's in this one. So it's a little easier on him because, you know, for some reason he likes doing the, uh, he liked redoing the whole thing over. So, you know, he has two accounts. He has a lower level account, which is part of this clan. And his higher level account is part of a clan where there's at least like a thousand people in it. So as your clans get bigger, the resources required and the materials required to build get bigger as well if that makes any sense so like you guys saw me contribute to those projects 
that I have for the blueprints and everything like that. Now, I'm not sure if those change, but I do know like a lot of this stuff, like this statue here, during the Plague Star event, we had to farm this material called Hemocyte. And because we were a small clan, it only required us 300 Hemocyte. My buddy's clan, they required them to do 10,000 Hemocyte. So uh, that's an example of how kind of being in a uh, big clan can be detrimental, you know, if you don't have the player base that's actually playing the game. And um, I don't know how they did it. I think they have a few very, very dedicated players that grinded the hell out of the Plague Star event. I know for us, uh, we grinded the hell out of it, and it was it's a bore. It was boring. It got like pretty old after a while. But you know, because the event was in a specific amount of time, and we were told that there's going to be this blueprint and everything out of it. So you know, needless to say, we did what we had to do. But uh, anyways, with that being said, uh, this dog meat, I hope uh, you're enjoying Warframe. And if you're not and thinking about jumping in, I hope you uh, jump in and have a uh, great time on Warframe. So anyways, I will see you guys later. And that's it.